Hello everyone, Russ of Aquarimax here, and it's time for the isopod unboxing. We've got a couple of different species in here. One of these that I've been waiting to get for a really long time. I'm interested, of course, in getting both of them. Oh, very nice packing there. You can feel there's still a little residual warmth in the heat pack. Very nice. I'm going to close my knife there. Okay. Now, move some newspaper out of the way. Ho ho! Here we go. Okay, I want to make sure we get a good shot here of what we got going on. Hopefully, it'll work. So, where am I Your moving? Hands in the way. That's a little better. A little bit towards the kitchen. There you go, right there. Okay. Now, what right here? There. We've got Porcelione de Prunosis Whiteout. So they're basically, can you see those all right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are a type of albino, but um, they're Porcelion de Prunosis, which is the uh, powder blue isopod. I also have the orange version, but this version okay. is basically without pigment. Towards me to stand. And I don't want to lose these guys. They, they're pretty active, but you can get a pretty decent shot of those. I'm gonna close those up now so they don't get out. Uh, and I'm gonna put them in their normal container Let's do that before we finish unboxing. There we go, thank you. This is where they're going, their new home. I'm gonna adjust these leaves so they don't have a place to get out because these isopods are good climbers, fast runners. I don't wanna lose any of them. There we go. There we go. All right, so now I'm gonna, actually what I'm gonna do I think pick this up so you get a better look at it. Is that in focus all right? Almost. There we go. Okay, now let's take a look at these little guys as they scurry into their new home. Anybody left in there? Oh, took off pretty fast. There's one. There's another one right there. So now I have three different colors, see three different morphs of Porcelionides prunosis. It's one of the fastest breeding isopods. They do well in well-ventilated dry habitats and so on. I have them in with my uh, leopard gecko and they thrive in there. So an excellent choice for a bioactive vivarium where there's decent ventilation and even when it's on the arid side, as long as they have a moist place they can retreat to. All right, let's move on to the next one. Now, you may have already seen the label, I'm not sure. But I am super stoked for these. These are cool. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. These are Porcelio Magnificus. Check it out. You can see, there's one right there. They're hiding now that I open it up. There's one. Now these aren't anywhere near full grown. They're, they're young ones. And I'm going to fish through that in a minute here so you can get a really good look at them. I want to compare them with um, Porcelio Hoffman's egg eye, the Titans, so you can get a, a look at both of them together, as well as with the uh, Porcelio scabber, the original orange isopod in the hobby. We're going to do a little comparison, but first I'm going to um, kind of go through the the packing material so we can get a better look at these isopods, okay? Okay, now I'm going to take these guys, put them in this larger container to just get a look at them um, and do the comparisons like I was saying. And if you want to see a list of all the isopods that I have, you can go to my website, aquarimax.com, and I have an isopod species tab there. You can check them all out. And then um, I also have in the description, I'll put a link to that to this in the description. I'll also put in the description links to various isopod supplies from isopod foods that I use to potential enclosures, that kind of thing. So if you're interested in getting into isopods and you haven't already, um, that could be a good resource for you. And also if you already have isopods, but maybe you want to look at how I take care of mine, that could be a good place for you to go as well. So I want to see how many we have. Um, first of all, make sure we don't have any DOAs. I don't think we do. Everybody looks like they're in excellent shape. But as I was saying, these are already bigger than Porcelio scabber, but they get so much bigger than this. They are arguably the largest terrestrial isopod kept in captivity. Some people say the Titans are bigger. Some people say these guys are bigger. But at any rate, they get huge. So these are just fairly small juveniles right now. 
I mean, they've, they've got some growth on them for sure. But they're going to get a lot bigger than this, which is pretty exciting. Um, I'll point out a couple of other things in just a minute that I'd like to, to highlight. Okay, there are five in there so far. Here comes another one. Um, there's the sixth one. I want to see if I can show you what's going on. It's a little bit difficult to get it in the shot here. But there we are. Look at those antennae. You can see they kind of have white antennae and a white border all around the body. It's kind of fun. And the uropods on this one too. You can see they're kind of white. Which is really pretty cool. I love that color scheme. It's an extra dimension that kind of offsets the orange, which I think is really, really neat. Okay, so we've got a whole bunch of them holed up along the edge here. I'm gonna try to liberate them from that. Oh, that one almost took off. Okay, and scoop this one out. Oh, I picked one up and then dropped it. That one took off. Let's see if I can get them out into the open where I can grab them. That's it's kind of tricky. They, they seem to be favoring the corners. And then this last one is kind of holding out on me. There's one. Oh, that's not the last one though, is it? I see another one in there. One important thing to do whenever you get isopods in any kind of medium, doesn't matter if it's paper towels or aspen shavings, this one looks like it's a good mix of aspen shavings and uh, sphagnum moss. I think that's a, that's a great shipping medium. And it's also got some of the uh, polyacrylamide spheres in there to help keep moisture. But uh, an interesting thing, uh, one, one tip I would give you that maybe seems obvious but isn't to everybody, is that you should never ever throw any of this substrate away. Because it could have isopods in it that you can't see. It could have tiny babies in there, you never know. So it's best just to put that into your container that you um, are going to use for the isopods home. Let's take a look here. We can get a count on these little isopods here. If we can get them in focus, there we go. What do we got? I can't really see the angle very well. Could you get a count on those? Looks like 11. 11, that's perfect. Because I paid for 10, so I got a freebie. Nice. Which is pretty nice. So let's do a little comparison with the Titans and then with the uh, Spanish orange. So the Titans right here, I'm gonna pull out one of the um, larger juvenile Titans now. So you can take a look at them, comparing them. Holy cow, everybody's hiding. Where did everybody go? There we are, they're all under this piece of wood. I'm gonna find one of the uh, larger male juveniles. I don't have any male, um, fully grown males right now but I do have some fairly large juvenile. You know, they're mature, they're breeding. They're just not full size. So here is an example of a full size, or sorry, not full size, male, um, mature, but not, you know, not, it's gonna get quite a bit bigger than this, but it's breeding age already. And let's, let's do a little comparison there. So you can see that, it's hard to say, I think the Titan is a little bit more glossy of course it's darker and it's got um, kind of the white scalloped edges but it does not have the white antennae that the uh, Porcelio Magnificus have. And at this age, I'm seeing a little bit of differentiation in the Europods. Here on this one you can see his Europods are crazy long. There he is, really long and they get longer as they grow. And hopefully you can see it. But this individual right here, it's kind of in the shadows. Is that better? Mm. You can see its uropods are starting to differentiate, get a little longer than the females. So in both species you can uh, distinguish males from females partly by the uropods. And they, they both have kind of an elongate body shape, I think, um, compared to a lot of other isopods. They tend to be a little bit elongated. So I'm going to put this guy back. And now let's take a look at the Spanish orange. right here. Definitely don't want to get these mixed up, but I don't think I will because even the smallest of these Magnificus is bigger than the Scabber. I want you to get an idea of the difference in the orange color. Hopefully you can 
see that? Is that showing up okay? They're in focus. Okay, cool. You can see that this one, the Porcelia scabber maybe has a, a little bit darker color, this particular specimen at least does. And they both have a little bit of, you can see a little glint of glossiness in, in both of them, but not so much as you would see in, say, a Porcelia labus. And the, of course, the uh, Porcelia scabber does not have the, the white antennae or the white edging that the um, Porcelio uh, Magnificus have. So let's get these Porcelio Magnificus into their new home. Let's watch them uh, explore. Closure. Can you see that okay? All right. First, I'm going to dump in the shipping material, make sure we're not missing out on anything. And there, that's empty. All right. Now, what I'm going to do, I think, is turn over this piece of cork bark. And I'll just kind of pour them under the cork bark and let them do their thing. There we go. And thanks for watching today. If you uh, want to check out some more isopod videos, I have a lot of them. So I'll put a few here at the end of the video in the end screen so you can check those out. I post videos every Wednesday and Friday all on aquarium and vivarium pets. Please feel free to leave a comment, a share, a like, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then click the bell icon so you don't miss my next video.